there's a bass over there in that lay down. And there's one over here underneath this little overhanging bush. It's gonna be kind of a tricky cast, but I still think we can get one to bite. So usually this is kind of what we use as the boat ramp at this pond. This is where we back the truck up to put the Old Town kayak in. And if we got close, we might blow it because I'm seeing, I think three bass that we would blow out if we just came down here haphazard. So I think this one right here in this shadow is more catchable right now. It's right there. And what I'll do, I'll stay way back, make a long cast past them. There's one, There's one right there. We usually put the boats and the kayaks in right here. That's not a big one, but he liked him a Cinco. See, and this fish has been sitting right over there in that shade line, garden fry. Now, if we would have come in here with that kayak or tin boat or something like that, we would have spooked that fish. Now, again, this is a smaller fish, but my gosh, it could have been a six, seven pounder. You just don't know. And what I'll do, so I've seen several fry garters right over here. So I'm probably gonna walk over here a little bit and just easily place him back into the water so I don't spook nothing else. Right here, right by that stick. See That's him? not a bass, is it? Yeah, guaranteed. Move real slow. Where? Right on that stick. He was just chasing real hard. There he is, see him? Oh yeah, right next to the bank. Right here. Usually if these fry garters, if they don't spook, on that first cast, like if they turn around on it real quick, they will, they'll usually bite. Yep, right there. Ooh, that worked, didn't it? Props to Kyle on that one behind the camera. He, he actually saw that fish, I didn't. Water's a little dingy today. Pretty fish, right? A little male up there guarding his fry. And man, that, that was what, 10 feet in front of us, wasn't it? Right, watch out, dog. We'll put him right back so he can keep on doing his duties. And when I come down to a pond and I think the fish are post spawn. There's two things to me that tell me the fish are post-spawn. First of all, of course, you see big balls of fry. Uh, fry essentially look like really small minnows. And when I say small minnows, I mean probably the width of your pinky fingernail. And so that tells me they're post-spawn, but also you'll a lot of times see these bigger females. They'll be kind of cruising. It's kind of, they kind of act like they're a little hungover. They just kind of, you know, saunter around like this and they'll always be like that far underneath the water surface so those two things told me that it's probably post spawn here um so my number one weapon i guess you could call it for any post spawn situation is a five inch gary on moto cinco um everybody's heard of it um i've got a vmc little wacky tool band on it and i'm also fishing it on the uh, vmc weedless Nico hook. It's got two big strands of monofilament line right there so I can pitch it around that lay down and pitch it around there, skip it up underneath this stuff and it's not gonna get hung up as much. But, and also eight pound, I use eight pound test, eight pound fluorocarbon. They can't see it as well. And I know that this water's a little bit dingy, but you gotta think about it. This is all about stealth. This is sneaking up on these fish and anything I can get in my favor, I'm gonna take. So today, this happens to be eight pound Seaguar and Visex. I've got it spooled straight fluorocarbon. I don't do the braided line leader much. I'll do it sometimes, but I just kinda of like straight fluoro. I've got my drag kinda of set loose because these are kinda of close quarters hook sets. I don't wanna break my line or bend you know, a light wire hook or anything. So I've got my drag kinda of loose. I've got a, I think this is a seven foot medium, yeah, seven foot medium spinning rod. And I've got a Daiwa Procyon reel on it, smooth. It's like 120 bucks or something. It's a good reel for a price point. 
and uh, that's that's about as difficult as you need to make it um i can walk the banks here all day i bet you and catch fish after fish after fish but the important thing is when you see these fish cruising you want to cast past them now that one that i just caught with a little bit of a fluke usually you cast past it and then bring your bait to it so you so the splash of the bait doesn't scare them and i bet you we'll catch another